And this was the scene just over 17 hours ago in northern Japan when that tsunami swept everything before it in taking, taking out houses and cars, picking up uh, vehicles and tossing them around. Incredible video as this 23-foot uh, tsunami made its way six miles inland in northern Japan. Right now, in some parts, it is difficult to know where the coast ends and where the land begins. Another amazing scene as this tsunami, the power of that devastation, continues, continues to uh, cause huge problems across Japan Wolf as we now have daylight there and there is a chance to finally assess the full impact of this damage. And just look at those images, they really are extraordinary. Yeah, look at the, look at this, this is really sh shocking, the, this video that uh, we're seeing from the devastation from the tsunami. This was land, but it's now all water. When you think about the waves coming in, let's say it, 10 feet or whatever, and the waves coming in uh, uh, at this powerful rate, not just a wave, but for, for long, long distances, and the, the water that's just thrust on the land, destroying everything in its wake. Uh, it's really heart, uh, heartbreaking to see this. Uh, and among other things, Japan's Kyoto News Agency is now reporting that some radioactivity may be leaking from a nuclear reactor north of Tokyo. There are concerns right now that in the aftermath of the earthquake, this reactor may be losing its ability to adequately cool its core. Our Homeland Security correspondent, Jean Reserve, she's monitoring this situation for us. Uh, Jean, the Japan's prime minister said earlier in the day there was no evidence of radioactive leaks, but then since then there have been some other reports suggesting there are concerns. How dangerous potentially is this situation? Well, there is some new information. Japan's Kyoto News Agency, citing the country's nuclear and industrial safety agency, reports radiation levels eight times normal are being measured at a monitoring post near the main gate of one of the country's nuclear plants. Rattling in the earthquake, Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. An American working inside told his wife of falling lights and windows. Everything was shaking and next thing they were told to get out, leave, evacuate. 3,000 people living close to the plant were also told to get out. So far they have not seen uh, uh, evidence of radiation leaks, but obviously you've got to take all potential precautions. When the quake hit, the reactor automatically shut down. But power coming into the plant was also disrupted, shutting down the system which cools the reactor core, which is very hot even when the plant isn't running. It's sort of like putting a, a, a pan in the oven. You can turn the oven off, but if you go in and reach for that pan, you're going to burn yourself because the pan is still hot. The cooling system has redundancies. When the grid goes down, emergency generators are supposed to kick in, but those were flooded. Right now, batteries are running the system. If they run out and another source of power isn't restored, the core could overheat and possibly melt down. The plant is designed to contain the radioactivity, but the pressure could be extreme. The concern is, is that we could literally blow the roof off this reactor. In 1986, the reactor at Chernobyl in Russia ruptured, sending a plume of radioactivity over Europe. The nuclear power industry says nothing like that is likely at the Fukushima Daiichi reactor. It's very, very remote. The containment from all reports that we've heard is intact. There hasn't been any fuel damage yet. They are cooling the core. We do have this late update. The evacuation zone around the plant has been enlarged now to 10 kilometers. The U.S. government is monitoring the situation and has offered assistance, Wolf. What a, uh, that's a very worrisome part of the story, Gene. Thanks. We'll stay on top of it. Uh, much more of the breaking news coverage right after this.